At some point you've probably wondered what the largest number is. Unfortunately, there's no answer to this question. You might say infinity, but that's not a number, it's a concept meaning something that has no end. And it can't be a finite number because you can just add one to any number being proclaimed as the biggest. But all you can do is find the biggest number that has ever been defined. So let's start off with a number that's commonly considered large. A million. Now this number is used quite commonly. A megabyte has a million bytes. Countries usually have populations in millions, and it also happens to be the largest number ever manually counted to. Done by Jeremy Harp in 2007, a process which took him 89 days. It's also probably the largest number anyone could feasibly count to. As even counting to say a billion, which doesn't seem much larger at first glance, counting to a million took 89 days, while counting to a billion would take you 32 years. Although being much larger, it's still used commonly. There are 1.2 billion cars on Earth, world population is 8.4 billion, and Elon Musk has a net worth of $377 billion. Though it's still not as rich as the richest company, Apple, which has a market capitalization of $3.6 trillion. A trillion isn't used as commonly as a million or billion. Most people have heard of it though, unlike the next numbers. A quadrillion is a number with 15 zeros. If you want an example of it, there are about 9 quadrillion meters in a light year, which is already an immense number, but after this they start getting insanely big. There are about 1.7 quintillion molecules in a drop of water, 7 sextillion grains of sand on earth, 7 octillion atoms in the human body, and the sun weighs about 2 decillion grams. Also I should probably mention scientists and mathematicians, quite big numbers in standard form. But their number above the 10 is equal to the number of zeros it has. After the decillion, we jump to Google, which has 100 zeros. To give a sense of scale, the estimated number of atoms in the observable universe is 10 to the 80, which is way smaller than a Google. But there are still bigger numbers. For example, 10 to the power of 116, which is the number of 6 by 6 Rubik's Cube combinations. Or 10 to the power of 120, which is the number of possible chess games that can be played differently. Although these numbers are dwarfed by a centillion, Put it in perspective, imagine you took the smallest possible thing, the Planck length, which is a septillion times smaller than an atom, and you filled the entire universe with it. You can fit about 10 to the power of 184 Planck lengths in the universe, which is vastly smaller than a centillion, but even it isn't as big as a millillion, which is far larger with 3003 zeros, which is like this when written out. It's hard to put into words how big it is, and it's so far beyond anything in our universe that it's hard to find any comparison to how huge it is, although we can still find something bigger. Remember that 6x6 Rubik's Cube? Well, the largest Rubik's Cube ever, the 33x33, 33 has over 10th of power 4094 combinations. An even bigger example would be the number of books in the Library of Babel. It contains every possible arrangement of letters and characters. It has every book ever written, every conversation you've ever had, an exact description of your death, and the script of this video before I even wrote it. It contains over 10th of the power of 1,800,000 books, which is an immense number but still not as big as a microlion, which has over 3 million zeros. Micro is also the first SI prefix, meaning a million. So you can continue from there until we get to a quectillion, 3 non-million zeros. But if we want to reach an even larger number, we're going to go back to a Google. Now, imagine if instead of having 100 zeros, it had a Google zeros, so it's 10th the power of 10th the power of 100. This number is called a Googleplex. This is a number so gigantic, even if you wrote a zero on every atom in the universe, you still wouldn't have enough space to write it down. Is there a bigger number? Well, to find out, imagine this. Think about how much space the observable universe takes up. Now, in that space, how many possible arrangements of matter could occur? It's an absolutely huge number, but a finite one. Now, if you were to travel 10th of power of 10th of power of 115 light years in any direction, due to the laws of probability, you would likely encounter a volume of space that was identical to our universe down to the atom, with an exact version of the Milky Way galaxy, an exact version of the Earth, and an exact version of you watching this video right now. That number is far larger than a Googleplex, but if you repeat the same process and make a number with a Googleplex zeros, you get a Googleplexian. At this point, finding non-arbitrary numbers beyond this becomes quite challenging. Tonako reoccurrence time of the universe is 10th of 10th of 10th of 10th of 13 years which is a lot larger than a Googleplexian, but since that's the largest number ever calculated in physics, it's probably the biggest number with any connection to reality. The next number we'll be talking about is Graham's number, which was proposed as an upper bound solution to a problem in a field of math called Ramsey theory. It is a number so immense that you can't write in standard form because the number of tens in the power stack itself will be practically the same as the number. So instead we use something called arrow notation. To start with, 3 arrow 3 is just 3 cubed, or 27. 
pretty simple, right? But 3 double arrow 3 is 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 3, which equals 7.6 trillion. Just by adding 1 3, we went from 27 to 7.6 trillion. Now for 3 triple arrow 3, we just have 3, but 7.6 trillion stacks of power above it. Remember what happened when we added just 1 3? This number is already incomprehensibly larger than every other number we've talked about, but we're just getting started. Now repeat this to get 3 quadruple arrow 3, and name it G1. Now to find G2, I have two stories, but G1 hours in between them. Remember that even with four hours is completely incomprehensible, and now we have G1 hours in between them. For G3, do the same thing but have G2 hours in between it. Continue this process until you get to G64. And now you have the Graham's number. This is a number so incomprehensibly colossal that there isn't any comparison to it. There simply isn't a Graham's number of anything. Your brain would literally collapse into a black hole if you tried to remember all the digits. But why stop at G64? You could have G65 with the Graham's number hours in between it. Or G1 million, which is called a four call. And why not G, G64? Or G64 with G64Gs between them. There really isn't a limit to what we can do with this notation. There are much bigger numbers than Graham's number that people have come up with, like Tree 3 or SSCG3, which are both insanely fast growing functions. But the final number we will be talking about is Rayo's number. It was defined in a big number duel hosted by MIT in 2007. The competitors, Augustine Rayo and Adam Elger, had to define the biggest finite number. Rayo ended up winning the duel by defining his as the smallest number bigger than any finite number that can be named by an expression in the language of first order set theory with a Google symbols or less. Set theory isn't a very simple efficient language for small numbers, but for large numbers like Graham's number tree 3, you can define it using not that many symbols. So if you had a Google symbols, you could easily come up with something much bigger than any finite number ever defined. Now to be clear, the rules of the competition said that your answer couldn't be semantic. So he did not define it in words like I've shown, instead he used a mathematical language called second order logic to write it. As far as I'm aware, this is the largest properly defined number that has ever been thought up, 